While I've got everything off the front end removed that can be removed from the E30, it's almost an unmissable opportunity not to do a removable front core support on the car. Now, I'm a bit reluctant to do this because it wasn't in the original plan and I don't want to delay moving the project forward any more than I have to. But as this car is going to be an engine swapped car and the engine may need to come out in and out a couple more times, it probably would pay to do a removable front core support on it. Having it removable might not just help with getting the engine in and out, it might also help with future maintenance on the engine because obviously it'll be a larger engine in this bay so a bit tighter to work on. Another factor in changing my mind has been this previous damage to the core support which is obviously from a previous prang that I showed in, in a, an older video. I've already worked it over with a hammer and improved it quite a lot actually even though it still looks terrible but I know if I took this front core support off the car I could do a much better job in straightening it out probably solving all the problems with it other than the cosmetics which don't really matter because of course it'll be behind a bumper etc. And before you say it, yes I am aware that you can get complete replacement panels for this front core support and I have had a look into maybe just taking this one out and putting a brand new one in but from all the pictures of them I've seen I'm not convinced by the quality of the fitment and the quality of the pressed steel. For example, I see a lot of ripples which aren't on these factory pieces. So if I can use this original one, I definitely will. Only when I know that it can't be saved would I consider putting an aftermarket one in. One of the things that has been putting me off taking this job on is that you see a lot of people who have started the job and given up, leaving it for a, a future owner to fix when they find it at a later date. So I know this, this is unlikely to be a breeze, but I think if we have sensible expectations and some decent tools to work with, I reckon there's a good chance that we can get a good result with it. First things first, let's have a good close look at what's actually fixing this core support onto the front of the car. Now I can see straight away that there are a few beads of weld around the chassis rail area, but mostly it seems to be spot welds which we know are a pain in the ass. I don't think I've ever actually removed a spot weld without making a mess but I have a new tool and hopefully that's all about to change. So this is what I've picked up, it's a US Pro spot weld cutter set. The idea is that it's pretty much a hole saw in miniature scale so that you can cut spot welds out. Once you've done a center punch on the spot weld, this pin locks into it to prevent the cutter from walking across the panel. Quite excited to use this, it seems like it should work a trick. And for the really awkward spot welds, I've picked up this right angle adapter in hex drive. So I'll attach a drill to this end and put my spot weld cutters in here. And that will enable me to get into really tight spots. That's cut it, it's very neat that, I'm impressed, good start.
Now I've cut the 12 easiest spot welds on the job, I can report back about this tool. I'm actually amazed at how good it is. I was not expecting it to cut as well as it does and it's incredibly neat. I think the trick to it is to make sure you've got a very reliable punch mark and I've used a small one or it was a 1.5 drill bit just to enhance that punch mark so the pin can stay absolutely rock solid in there. It's on a spring if you haven't noticed. Works really well. I'm using the 8mm cutter, slightly on the large side, but it's working a treat. Let's continue with the more awkward ones. Instead of cutting the rest of the spot welds at the top, I've decided to leave that attached and turn my attention to the lower support. I've done the ones on the chassis rail, there are eight, four on each side, two front, two back. They're a lot harder to spot the spot welds down here, and as you can see, I actually cocked up a bit and missed one and had to do another hole. With another eight cut, the bit is still going, although I have lost the tooth off it. Now, to get into these around the chassis rail here, required the tool to be a bit longer. So what I've done is I've put it into a long 7mm socket. It's a very tight fit. It, it doesn't feel like it is a 7mm thing. I've kind of forced it in there, but it's worked well. I decided to do that instead of using the right angle one. I'll save the right angle adapter for the more awkward ones. Before I cut the rest of the spot welds that are holding the top part on, I'm gonna turn my attention to a couple of beads of weld that need cutting from around the chassis rail. There's a bead here, here and there's also one on the radiator support just underneath. I think my intention really is to get it to the point where it's held on in just four places and then I can mark everything up and then cut the final connections just so I know when I'm putting it back, I'm putting it back in exactly the right place.
Hey. Hey. And with that, all the awkward spot welds are cut as well. That's every single spot weld cut. Now, the right angle drive, it worked a treat to be honest, but it doesn't sound like it's gonna continue working for much longer. I think it might be a bit too abusive for it that. Also, it is a shame that the hex on this and the hex on the spot weld cutter didn't match up, so I've had to make a silly adaption stack to make it work but we got there in the end. So this core support is now actually held on by only two places, which are this side and that side. I think there's two spot welds here, but this is much thicker metal than the other sheet metal with spot welds. So I think I'm gonna avoid trying to cut the spot welds with that tool. And I think I might just cut a line across this with an angle grinder. That will also help me make sure I can line it up back into its original position with certainty. So I think that's actually a reasonably good solution. So let's get the angle grinder out and get this cut and then hopefully the whole core support can be teased out of its home. She ain't jumping out, but she does move. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. 
Well, that came out fairly easily, which was great news. I thought it was going to be a bit more of a wrestle than it was. Now, instead of going around and marking on with a marker pen exactly where it went, I've decided a more reliable method will be to retain a couple of these spot welds and also using these bottom brackets so I know in four places exactly where it should sit on the car so I can make sure the core support goes back in exactly the right position. You'll see what I mean a bit later on. So I've got the remains of all those spot welds ground down now and there's a couple where I went a little bit deep on with the cutter. While I'm at it I think I'm just going to put a few tacks of weld on and then grind them down smooth just so I make sure the metal's not weak going forward. The bits where I've gone through in particular are on this front section here. So I'm going to crack the copper block back out and put a couple of little tacks. So now the car side is in primer and drying, we can turn our attention back to the actual core support. The good news is, I didn't cause any more damage in removing it. The bad news is, there's still the damage to repair that I already knew about, but this should be a much easier thing to repair now it's off the car. As you can see, I've already had a little go at this in the past, and I extended this slot and I was using drifts with a dolly on the other side whilst it was on the car to try and improve it. And it did improve it quite a bit, but now it's off the car, I think I'm going to cut this window wider and get some kind of larger drift in there and hammer it in and hopefully we can end up with a much straighter panel that I can continue using. Well, after a couple of hours of hammering and welding, I've got that window patched back in on the back. And on the front side of it, I've got the shape pretty much right to back how it would be from factory, like on this side. Obviously, there's some ripples in the surface because you can't get a dolly in very easily behind. But all the mounting points are back in the place they should be. And because you're never going to be able to see this anyway, I'm very happy to use this again and retain the OE quality fitment at the top, which I'm chuffed to do. So the next thing to do is to pick it back up and just make sure it still fits on the car and I haven't warped it welding or anything like that. And then we'll turn our attention to these bottom mounting points. I'm going to do the bottom two first. I'm intending to put a couple of plates in, removing these tabs, drill them so I can put rib nuts in on the car, but let's do it one step at a time. So it still fits a treat, which is great news. So what I'm planning to do is cut these tabs off, front and back, and replace them with a full length rectangular piece of sheet metal. And I'll drill those tabs and put riv nuts into these chassis legs to secure it on. So what I need to do first is cut these tabs off and replace them with that sheet.
Right, so with a bit of cardboard aided design, I've got my mounting plate, which is 11 by 5.7 centimeters in size. And that should fit just perfectly to replace those tabs and give a bit of, give a bit of extra space on either side for some chunky M10 bolts, which I'm going to use with riv nuts to affix this. Looks pretty good to me, that. I just need to get it welded in place. So that's the tabs welded on for my lower supports into the chassis rails. Now I've decided I'm going to do two holes, one on each side, and I'm going to do that off the car so I can get them perfectly central on these tabs. And then I'll bring the support back to the car, clamp it into place, and then I'll be able to mark where I need to drill on the actual car's chassis leg so I know it's in exactly the same place it came off. Right, well that's my pilot holes drilled, now it's time for more new toys. It's a rib nut kit. So this is the main tool, these are called mandrills and these are nose pieces. So what this tool does is it installs these, which are a threaded insert that you can then screw a bolt into. Really handy for adding threaded holes to panels. This tool allows you to squeeze the riv nut so it mushrooms up to lock it in place on the panel that you're putting it in. And this is how it goes together. First things first, you open it up all the way like that. You make sure this is fully screwed in. Then you can put the mandrill in, which threads into there. Then you slacken this part, this collar off slightly so you can get the nose piece on. Then you put the nose piece on. Till it's butted up. Now you put the rib nut on so it takes up all the thread. Then what you do is you unscrew this collar so it butts up to it firmly and the locking collar goes down to the base. Check it's all firmed up. So now when you pull these handles together, it'll mushroom up the riv nut. That took some figuring out actually, so I ended up doing a test one. So this is the result into just a piece of scrap. I'm going with M10s. I think this is gonna work beautifully.
Well, I'm really impressed with that. Never used a rib nut thing before and it works a treat. I had to adjust what I was doing because I didn't quite have the stones to get it from full width. So I did it in two pulls. They're really in solid. I'll put a link to this in the description. That's a good tool, that. So now I'm happy that the bottom end bolts on and off the car nice and easily. I need to turn my attention to this top part. As you've seen, I've just marked it all up on the car. And what I need to do now is cut these tabs off and replace it with flat plate. Sometimes when you're making patches, you've just got to start again, unfortunately. I cocked this one up, it's just not the right shape and I can't make it work. Anyway, I've made a new paper template and I'm pretty confident this shape is going to work. Perfect. Need to tidy up the corners, but happy with that.
Well, I definitely saved the most difficult bit to last with these top end plates. There was quite a lot of back and forth to get that to fit up correctly. But ultimately, I'm really pleased with how it's come out in the end. And if you look at my original reference points, the core support fits bloody perfectly, which is a great result. It's definitely been worth spending the extra time to make sure everything fits up just right. And one extra thing I should mention is I've added, hammered a little kick out on each of the four plates almost like a little ski slope on the plate, just to make it easier to slide the core support back in place when it's off. Being such a close fit, I'm expecting to scrape the paint each time I take it on and off, so this should help minimize that. Uh, I'll overlay some close-ups of each mounting point at the end of the video, which you can have a close look at if you're planning to do this job yourself. And of course, I had a great experience with that spot weld cutter, the cheap rib nut kit, and also a couple of other tools like that stepper drill, which I'd definitely advise if you were going to try this yourself. I'll make sure those are linked in the description so you can check those out. As a final piece of advice, I'd say this is one of those jobs that looks a lot easier than it actually is. Be prepared to throw a few days at this if you want it to be genuinely functional in terms of taking it on and off because it just requires a lot of finessing. Obviously there's a few little patches of surface rust that still need addressing on this front core support and I'll want to get the whole thing painted up as well before I can properly call this a finished job. Uh, another thing I'm considering is adding a connector into the wiring that runs across the front for the headlights and that way in the future it'll just be easier to whip this on and off and I can really lean into the fact I've modified it. And if you found this video helpful, please do give us a like and make sure you subscribe to see if the removable front core support actually does help me shoehorn the M52 engine in. Thanks very much for watching.